Let's look at the versatility of the Creality Rotary Pro attachment to expand your capabilities of the Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver. Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations, and today I will specifically focus on the Creality Rotary Pro attachment that connects to the Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver. In a previous video, I covered how to set up and run the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver, so I've listed that link in the description below. For today's video on the Rotary Pro attachment, I've broken down the video into the following chapters. Number one, features. Number two, unboxing boxing and setup, and number three, engraving parts, including fully wrapped engraved tumblers. So let's get started. First, I want to thank ZBanks for sending me the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt diode laser and the Rotary Pro attachment for my evaluation. Now, let's discuss the features. The rotary attachment allows you to engrave a variety of objects, such as tumblers, glasses, jewelry rings, and spheres using different tooling to hold the parts. It can hold objects that are a maximum of 230 millimeters long, and there are three main ways to clamp parts in the rotary attachment. The first is you can clamp from the outside. So cylindrical objects with a diameter of one to 110 millimeters fit in the chuck and the jaws have an anti-slip pad to accurately hold your objects. The great examples are again, tumblers and mugs. You can also clamp from the inside. Cylindrical objects with a diameter of 25 to 75 millimeters work really well and especially for glassware. And the third option is these hex studs, spheres with a diameter of one millimeter to 130 millimeters, or rings, bracelets, and other ring-shaped objects with a diameter of 15 to 100 millimeters work really well with this hex stud option. The adjustable jaws have a locking screw that allows you to easily adjust the holding diameter of the jaws for each part. Once the jaws are adjusted, it's simply a matter of unscrewing the locking screw so that the chuck spins freely. The Rotary Pro is fully assembled right out of the box and it easily connects to the Falcon 2 laser via a cable that connects to the Y-axis of the laser. The Rotary Pro is compatible with popular software such as Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. The price of the Rotary Pro is normally $189. However, it's on sale for $151.20 using the link in the description below. If you're working on a prototype project and you need some help, I have the answer for you. This brings me to the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you are working on any prototype projects, they can help you when you need a variety of parts. Besides making PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and lots of different types of 3D printing, including metal printing. You just need to go on their website, upload your design, select the material and quantity you need, and they will get you an instant quote. Then they will manufacture the parts and ship them right to your door. Give them a try and I think you will be amazed at what they can do for you. Check out PCBWay using the link below. Now, back to the show. Next, unboxing and setup. A quick start guide little flexible ruler, some hex shafts and some screws, the cable, and the main rotary unit. To set up the rotary attachment, first install leg extensions, which will allow the Rotary Pro to fit under the laser head. Next, install the aluminum plate to protect your work area. Then connect the Rotary Pro to the Y-axis of the laser. Align the rotary base to the laser gantry using a square. Install the enclosure over the laser and connect the various hoses and cables. Turn on the computer and open up your laser software, in my case, Lightburn. Go to the Settings tab. Make sure the Show Rotary Enable on the main window is clicked on. Click OK. Go to Laser Tools, Rotary Setup. Click on the chuck as a rotary type and choose Y axis for the rotary axis. Enter 40 millimeters per rotation. We'll come back to this screen later and that's when we'll enter the diameter of the object or circumference of the object that we're going to engrave. Then click OK. The enable rotary should be on the laser screen. Click it on. The next section is engraving parts. First, let's do an engraving of a full wrapped 
tumbler. Measure the diameter of the tumbler and enter the diameter into the Lightburn software in the Laser Tools tab. I measure the diameter of this tumbler to be 74.9 millimeter. Note, the Lightburn software will automatically calculate the circumference of the tumbler, so just write this number down because you'll want to use this to lay out your engraving area. In my case, the circumference of the tumbler was 235 millimeters. Measure the height of the tumbler that you want to engrave. This will be the width of the engraving area. I measured 155 millimeters for my tumbler. Draw a rectangle using the height of the engraving area to be the width of the rectangle and use the circumference you just wrote down to make the height of the rectangle. Make sure the output for the rectangle is turned off because you don't want to engrave the rectangle onto your tumbler. First, I sacrificed one of my tumblers to perform an engraving test. I set a minimum of 1,000 millimeters per minute and a maximum speed of 10,000 millimeters per minute and a power settings from 10% to 100% in 10 increments. I set the focus of the laser using the gauge block. Based on my test, I chose 5,000 millimeters per minute and 50% power to be the best settings. Next, I loaded a second tumbler so I could engrave a graphic design onto it. For my design, I went to the website The Noun Project. Link is in the description below. And I downloaded several sports related graphics. I resized them and combined them into the rectangle. You want to place the graphics so there isn't a lot of space on the borders because you want the design to appear random on the tumbler with no large gaps. When I initially imported the graphics, I need to rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise because the rotary is based on the Y axis. Manually move the laser head to the center of the laser over the midpoint of the tumbler represented in the middle of your graphics. You can fire the laser at a low power to help you align the laser to the midpoint of your tumbler. Then, click the frame button to confirm where the graphics will be engraved on the tumbler. Once you are happy with that, then hit the start button. After the engraving is done, remove the tumbler and clean it with a magic eraser and water. Next, engraving a drink glass. To hold the drink glass, change the jaws so they will hold the inside diameter of the glass. Measure the diameter of the glass. In my case, the diameter is 80 millimeters. The circumference is 251 millimeters. I wanted to personalize the glass with 38 millimeter high letters, so I drew a rectangle in light burn, 38 millimeters wide by 251 millimeters high. I typed in the name GG in Lightburn and I rotated the letters 90 degrees counterclockwise and I centered them in the rectangle. I didn't want to sacrifice my glass, so I went on YouTube and found somebody who recommended 75% power and 7,500 millimeters per minute speed for a 20 watt laser. So I decided to take my chances with this setting. I tried engraving the blue glass just to confirm whether or not it would engrave or not. I knew clear glass doesn't engrave with a diode laser because it goes right through the glass. But I wanted to see if the blue color made a difference. And unfortunately it didn't. It didn't work. So as I planned, my next step was to place this laser paper on the glass by cutting a section and placing it in warm water. The coating came off the paper and onto the glass. I smoothed the decal and wiped the excess water off. Then I placed the glass onto the Rotary Pro, adjusted the laser module height, I centered the laser where I wanted the personalized letters to go. I hit start and it worked. I soaked the glass in warm water to remove the excess decal, dried it, and I'm really happy with the results. Next, let's engrave a jewelry ring. In order to engrave a stainless steel jewelry ring, I replaced the jaws of the chuck with the hex shafts that have rounded balls at the ends of the tips. I measured the size 6 ring to be 20.26 millimeters in diameter, which has a circumference of 63.7 millimeters and a ring width of 8.3 millimeters. I drew a rectangle 8 millimeters wide by 63 millimeters high. I typed my name in light burn, rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise, and sized it to fit within the rectangle. I placed the ring on the end of the hex shafts and expanded the chuck to hold the ring securely. I adjusted the laser module height using the gate block. I manually centered the laser module over the ring and clicked the frame button. Then I hit the start button and it turned out great. Next, let's engrave a Christmas ornament. The great feature of the hex shafts is that they can hold spheres, so they are perfect to hold Christmas ornaments. This ornament has a 65 millimeter diameter 
and a 204 millimeter circumference. I drew a rectangle 60 millimeters wide by 204 millimeters high. I mounted the Christmas ornament so that the top faced the center of the headstock. I created text in Lightburn, rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise, and sized it to fit within the rectangle. I adjusted the laser module using the gauge block and centered the laser where I wanted the text to be centered. I set the laser speed to 4200 millimeters per minute and a power of 45%. I hit the frame button and once I was happy with that, I hit the start button. I was really pleased with the results. The Creality Rotary Pro is a multi-purpose attachment for the Creality Falcon 2 laser engraver that really expands your laser engraving capabilities by being able to engrave cylindrical objects such as tumblers, drink glasses, and rings, as well as spherical objects such as Christmas ornaments due to the variety of jaw designs. It's fully assembled and it attaches to the Creality Falcon 2 in minutes. It's easy to use the Lightburn software to create stunning products. If you found this video useful, please consider hitting the like button and also the subscribe button so you won't miss any future content. In my next video, I'll be evaluating two different manufacturers of filament dry boxes for 3D printing. So you don't want to miss that. And when that's available, the link will be here. In the meantime, you may want to watch the earlier video I made on the setup and operation of the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser engraver, and that link is here. Thanks for watching. Bye.